June 25, Songs of Praise for Salvation. In that day you will sing, I will praise you, O Lord. You were angry with me, but not any more. Now you comfort me. See, God has come to save me. I will trust in Him and not be afraid. The Lord God is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. With joy you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. In that wonderful day you will sing, Thank the Lord, praise His name, tell the nations what He has done, let them know how mighty He is. Sing to the Lord, for He has done wonderful things, make known His praise around the world. Let all the people of Jerusalem shout His praise with joy, for great is the Holy One of Israel who lives among you. Chapter 17, A Message About Damascus and Israel This message came to me concerning Damascus. Look, the city of Damascus will disappear. It will become a heap of ruins. The towns of Aror will be deserted. Flocks will graze in the streets and lie down undisturbed with no one to chase them away. The fortified towns of Israel will also be destroyed, and the royal power of Damascus will end. All that remains of Syria will share the fate of Israel's departed glory, declares the Lord of heaven's armies. In that day Israel's glory will grow dim, its robust body will waste away. The whole land will look like a grain field after the harvesters have gathered the grain. It will be desolate, like the fields in the valley of Rephaim after the harvest. Only a few of its people will be left, like stray olives left on a tree after the harvest. Only two or three remain in the highest branches. Four or five scattered here and there on the limbs, declares the Lord, the God of Israel. Then, at last, the people will look to their Creator and turn their eyes to the Holy One of Israel. They will no longer look to their idols for help or worship what their own hands have made. They will never again bow down to their Asherah poles or worship at the pagan shrines they have built. Their largest cities will be like a deserted forest, like the land the Hivites and Amorites abandoned when the Israelites came here so long ago. It will be utterly desolate. Why? Because you have turned from the God who can save you. You have forgotten the rock who can hide you. So you may plant the finest grapevines and import the most expensive seedlings. They may sprout on the day you set them out. Yes, they may blossom on the very morning you plant them, but you will never pick any grapes from them. Your only harvest will be a load of grief and unrelieved pain. Listen, the armies of many nations roar like the roaring of the sea. Hear the thunder of the mighty forces as they rush forward like thundering waves. But though they thunder like breakers on a beach, God will silence them, and they will run away. They will flee like chaff scattered by the wind, like a tumbleweed whirling before a storm. In the evening Israel waits in terror, but by dawn its enemies are dead. This is the just reward of those who plunder us, a fitting end for those who destroy us. Ahaz closes the temple. At that time, King Ahaz of Judah asked the king of Assyria for help. The armies of Edom had again invaded Judah and taken captives, and the Philistines had raided towns located in the foothills of Judah and in the Negev of Judah. They had already captured and occupied Beth Shemesh, Ajalon, Gedaroth, Soko with its villages, Timna with its villages, and Gimzo with its villages. The Lord was humbling Judah because of King Ahaz of Judah, for he had encouraged his people to sin and had been utterly unfaithful to the Lord. So when King Tiglath-Pileser of Assyria arrived, he attacked Ahaz instead of helping him. Ahaz took valuable items from the Lord's temple, the royal palace, and from the homes of his officials, and gave them to the king of Assyria as tribute. But this did not help him. King Ahaz then went to Damascus to meet with King Tiglath-Pileser of Assyria. While he was there, he took special note of the altar. Then he sent a model of the altar to Uriah the priest, along with its design in full detail. Uriah followed the king's instructions and built an altar just like it, and it was ready before the king returned from Damascus. 
When the king returned, he inspected the altar and made offerings on it. He presented a burnt offering and a grain offering. He poured out a liquid offering, and he sprinkled the blood of peace offerings on the altar. Then King Ahaz removed the old bronze altar from its place in front of the Lord's temple between the entrance and the new altar, and placed it on the north side of the new altar. He told Uriah the priest, Use the new altar for the morning sacrifices of burnt offering, the evening grain offering, the king's burnt offering and grain offering, and the burnt offerings of all the people, as well as their grain offerings and liquid offerings. Sprinkle the blood from all the burnt offerings and sacrifices on the new altar. The bronze altar will be for my personal use only. Uriah the priest did just as King Ahaz commanded him. Then the king removed the side panels and basins from the portable water carts. He also removed the great bronze basin called the sea from the backs of the bronze oxen and placed it on the stone pavement. In deference to the king of Assyria, he also removed the canopy that had been constructed inside the palace for use on the Sabbath day, as well as the king's outer entrance to the temple of the Lord. Even during this time of trouble, King Ahaz continued to reject the Lord. He offered sacrifices to the gods of Damascus who had defeated him. For he said, Since these gods help the kings of Aram, they will help me too if I sacrifice to them. But instead, they led to his ruin and the ruin of all Judah. The king took the various articles from the temple of God and broke them into pieces. He shut the doors of the Lord's temple so that no one could worship there, and he set up altars to pagan gods in every corner of Jerusalem. He made pagan shrines in all the towns of Judah for offering sacrifices to other gods. In this way, he aroused the anger of the Lord, the God of his ancestors. Hezekiah Rules in Judah Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, began to rule over Judah in the third year of King Hoshea's reign in Israel. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, just as his ancestor David had done. He removed the pagan shrines, smashed the sacred pillars, and cut down the Asherah poles. He broke up the bronze serpent that Moses had made, because the people of Israel had been offering sacrifices to it. The bronze serpent was called Nehushtan. Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. There was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, either before or after his time. He remained faithful to the Lord in everything, and he carefully obeyed all the commands the Lord had given Moses. So the Lord was with him, and Hezekiah was successful in everything he did. He revolted against the king of Assyria and refused to pay him tribute. He also conquered the Philistines as far distant as Gaza and its territory, from their smallest outpost to their largest walled city. Hezekiah was 25 years old when he became the king of Judah, and he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, just as his ancestor David had done. End of Pekah's Reign Then Hoshea, son of Elah, conspired against Pekah and assassinated him. He began to rule over Israel in the twentieth year of Jotham, son of Uzziah. The rest of the events in Pekah's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. Hoshea rules in Israel. Hoshea, son of Elah, began to rule over Israel in the twelfth year of King Ahaz's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria nine years. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, but not to the same extent as the kings of Israel who ruled before him. King Shalmaneser of Assyria attacked King Hoshea, so Hoshea was forced to pay heavy tribute to Assyria. But Hoshea stopped paying the annual tribute and conspired against the king of Assyria by asking King So of Egypt to help him shake free of Assyria's power. When the king of Assyria discovered this treachery, he seized Hoshea and put him in prison. Hosea's Prophecy The Lord gave this message to Hosea, son of Beri, during the years when Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah were kings of Judah, and Jeroboam, son of Jehoash, was king of Israel. Hosea's Wife and Children When the Lord first began speaking to Israel through Hosea, he said to him, Go and marry a prostitute, so that some of her children will be conceived in prostitution. This will illustrate how Israel has acted like a prostitute by turning against the Lord and worshiping other gods. So Hosea married Gomer, 
the daughter of Dibliam, and she became pregnant and gave Hosea a son. And the Lord said, Name the child Jezreel, for I am about to punish King Jehu's dynasty to avenge the murders he committed at Jezreel. In fact, I will bring an end to Israel's independence. I will break its military power in the Jezreel Valley. Soon Gomer became pregnant again and gave birth to a daughter. And the Lord said to Hosea, Name your daughter Lo-Ruhamah, not loved, for I will no longer show love to the people of Israel or forgive them, but I will show love to the people of Judah. I will free them from their enemies, not with weapons and armies or horses and charioteers, but by my power as the Lord their God. After Gomer had weaned Lo-Ruhamah, she again became pregnant and gave birth to a second son. And the Lord said, Name him Lo-Amai, not my people. For Israel is not my people, and I am not their God. Yet the time will come when Israel's people will be like the sands of the seashore, too many to count. Then, at the place where they were told, You are not my people, it will be said, You are children of the living God. Then the people of Judah and Israel will unite together. They will choose one leader for themselves, and they will return from exile together. What a day that will be, the day of Jezreel, when God will again plant his people in his land. In that day you will call your brothers Amai, my people, and you will call your sisters Ruhama, the ones I love. Charges Against an Unfaithful Wife But now bring charges against Israel, your mother, for she is no longer my wife, and I am no longer her husband. Tell her to remove the prostitute's makeup from her face and the clothing that exposes her breasts. Otherwise, I will strip her as naked as she was on the day she was born. I will leave her to die of thirst as in a dry and barren wilderness. And I will not love her children, for they were conceived in prostitution. Their mother is a shameless prostitute and became pregnant in a shameful way. She said, I'll run after other lovers and sell myself to them for food and water, for clothing of wool and linen, and for olive oil and drinks. For this reason, I will fence her in with thorn bushes. I will block her path with a wall to make her lose her way. When she runs after her lovers, she won't be able to catch them. She will search for them, but not find them. Then she will think I might as well return to my husband, for I was better off with him than I am now. She doesn't realize it was I who gave her everything she has, the grain, the new wine, the olive oil. I even gave her silver and gold, but she gave all my gifts to Baal. But now I will take back the ripened grain and new wine I generously provided each harvest season. I will take away the wool and linen clothing I gave her to cover her nakedness. I will strip her naked in public while all her lovers look on. No one will be able to rescue her from my hands. I will put an end to her annual festivals, her new moon celebrations, and her Sabbath days, all her appointed festivals. I will destroy her grapevines and fig trees, things she claims her lovers gave her. I will let them grow into tangled thickets where only wild animals will eat the fruit. I will punish her for all those times when she burned incense to her images of Baal, when she put on her earrings and jewels and went out to look for her lovers but forgot all about me, says the Lord.